So I had my account managers uh, organize it. They're kind of like my project managers. And so they, mm -hmm. they came up with all the ideas and everything. And wow. they led a lot of the different games and activities and stuff. We also did a gratitude ceremony. We told everyone mm -hmm. ahead of time, hey, we're going to have a moment during the team party where everyone's just going to share something that they're thankful for. And so uh, we did that as well. It was just, it was a great time. Everyone had fun. They laughed. It was about 90 minutes. We told them, hey, cool. it's going to be about 90 minutes. And we played games. We gave out prizes. It was a lot of fun. Welcome to the final agency hour for the year, live here in the Digital Mavericks Facebook group. And it's a Christmas theme, apparently, today. I'm Mr. Memo, so I'm not dressed up. But I have some friends who are. And I was told I had to play some Christmas music, so I had to make it Christmas jazz. Because I don't like Christmas music very much because I'm the Grinch, right? Truth is, I actually don't like Christmas very much, so... I'm going to bring some friends up here who are in a much happier mood than me. Otherwise, this could get dark pretty quickly. Please welcome Johnny Flash and Pete Crispy Butter Perry. How are you, brothers? Hey, Troy. Hey, Troy. Who hurt you when you were little? <laughs> <laughs> who forgot uh, to give you a present or something, you know? The list is long and deep, Pete. <laughs> uh it's you know it's that thing when you're walking around the city in 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 late November and you hear Christmas carols coming out of a retail shop. I just want to go there and strangle someone. I'm like, it's not even December and you're yeah. playing Christmas carols. Uh, no, no, I'll tell you what. Christmas is fun when you have kids, right? Yeah, yeah. It's I think it's all the the and I know I'm not alone here. I'm not the only person that finds Christmas challenging because it's all the extended family stuff that makes Christmas. Sure. challenging right you got to put up like it's like that one time of the year where you got to like put up with you know your distant cousin's weird behavior because it's christmas and you're not allowed to tell them how you really feel because it's christmas and you're supposed to be just happy because it's christmas right right <laughs> yeah i usually uh keep myself very busy on christmas day like cooking and cleaning so i don't have to have weird awkward conversations with people i don't know that well anyway <laughs> how are you guys doing Who, where, where was this memo that it was supposed to be a dress up like what did I miss? I have a red sweater. Does that count? Yeah, <laughs> you know, I've been trying to I've been trying to wear slack, this hat man. on. Yeah, I've been trying to wear this hat on as many Zoom calls this week and next week as possible. Like new client, uh, team members, like whatever. You know, I just I can only wear it a couple of weeks of the year, so I got to get it in as much as I can. <laughs> I love right, it. Exactly. Same here. Like I wear this shirt to everything. I wear it. <laughs> right. Like I'll be on the Velocity call. I'll wear this shirt again tomorrow. So. I love it. That's great. Be on the Velocity call, you'll see me in this again. I don't have, I don't have, I mean, you know, when Jin was working here, we had Christmas stuff coming out of our ears, but I don't really, you know, it's like, I don't know, it's just not a thing. I don't really have Christmas costumes, so I'll have to get my shit together for next year. I but do yet apologize. You take, you take two or three weeks off for Christmas. Well, it's certainly, <laughs> the thing, well, certainly celebrate it. well it's because it, it's summer here in Australia, right? right? So this is the thing that a lot of people on, you know, the other side of the planet don't understand. In, in our Christmas is our summer. So there's cricket, right, and there's beer and there's hot weather and there's the beach. And that's basically all we do for, you know, three or four weeks between Christmas and the end of January, um, which is why the economy slows down here because everyone's drunk for a few weeks. And then February, people are hungover and it starts to ramp back up and they're full of remorse and they're trying to get their shit together. Uh, whereas you guys, it's winter, right? So you kind of don't really, you don't take a holiday, right? You don't go away over Christmas. Is that right? Yeah, we're trying to go snowboarding in a couple few weeks right after Christmas. I was telling Max uh, ahead of time we're taking the whole family snowboarding. Oh, uh, nice. So it'll be pretty cool. Awesome. Hey, um, let us know in the chat where you are from in the world so we can uh, get uh, a bit of a heads up as to who's watching. What country are you from? What have you got planned for Christmas? Uh, today on the Agency Hour, we're going to talk a little bit about our reflections for 2021. Uh, we're going to talk about what our plans are and what our intentions are for 2022. And uh, then we have an opportunity if you guys jump on a call with one of our team and get some one-on-one -on -one help as well. So uh, keep your ears out for that. But where are you guys from? Let us know what country you're from in the comments uh, and maybe we'll dive. And by the way, this is going to be an episode of the Agency Hour podcast, which we are launching next year. This is going to become Agency Hour will be launched as a podcast next year. I've seen the artwork. I've heard the intros and outros. Max has done a fantastic job pulling it all together behind the scenes. Uh, and so this next year when we uh, go live in the Facebook group, it'll be a slightly different format because we're basically going to be recording an episode of the podcast as we do this. And so we'll be playing intros and outros and all that kind of cool stuff. Martin is here from 
North Macedonia in Europe. Our Christmas is after New Year's. Of course it is. That makes perfect sense. Why is it after New Year's? Why? That is strange. That is uh, so it's in like the 2nd of January. Um, so, Johnny, we also, you, you posted in Slack that you had a, a, a Christmas party for your remote team. Oh, yeah. I've got the photo queued up here. Uh, let me see. Actually, I don't know if there's there a way I can. Um, I see. I'm, I'm not the StreamYard expert here. Uh, share. Here we go. Let me see here. I have it queued up for you. I thought you might ask about that. Uh, your computer. Um, because, you know, back in, the, back in the old days, we'd just all, when we were all working in the same uh, office, we'd all just go out for a Christmas party. Right? In fact, one of our Mavericks, uh, one of our Mavericks the other day said they just had their Christmas party on a Friday night and they just all go out, they go 10 pin bowling or go to dinner or whatever. It's kind of hard to do that now because we're remote teams. And so Max and I are in Melbourne, but everyone else is, you know, in the Philippines or New Zealand or, or you know, the Gold Coast or the States. Uh, and so Johnny uh, shared some photos in our Slack about how he was celebrating the end of year and celebrating Christmas with his remote team. And uh, so this is going to be this is going to be great podcasting if you're listening to this and you're not going to be able to see the photos that Johnny shares. So if that's the case, get on over to Facebook and join our Facebook group. It's called Digital Mavericks. You can just go to facebook.com and search for Digital Mavericks group and then join the group. It's free. We let most people in, <laughs> not everyone, but we let most people in. And then you'll be able to see the visuals um, that we share on the the calls here. Johnny, how are you going with that screen sharing, brother? I'm I'm almost there, I think. It's asking me <laughs> to allow 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 my computer that's new to uh, do the thing, you know, share the screen. Uh-huh. Here. Yeah, got it. Uh, yeah, it's in, he's installing screen. He's, he's going into the privacy settings and letting I'm going into the privacy out. settings. You're, you're going to let me take over your webcam, right? I hope you haven't got, uh, I hope you haven't got, um, what is it? Login J. Uh, installed anywhere on your computer? Have you guys heard about that? The the big security breach with with the login. Uh, yeah. yeah. No, so yeah. Uh, that's no, we don't that's, have it, but yeah, I've heard of it. Yeah. Not good. Not good at uh, all. I think hey, we've Mike, lost Johnny. Actually, Mike Cannon says hi. Hey, Mike. Hi, Mike's in. Mike, are, Mike, you, are you back in the UK? Are you back in the UK, Mike? Are you still hanging out in Canada with Sheila Heard? Where are you now? I think we've lost Johnny. <laughs> Johnny, tried, Johnny, tried to share, Johnny tried to share a screen and he just disappeared. Johnny has, yep, tried to share a screen and has just disappeared off the face of the earth. So he'll be back in a moment. Uh, hey, Pete, what do you do um, now if there's, I know that, you know, you're even grinchier than I am. So how do you celebrate Christmas with your remote team? Um, I am not grinchier than you are. My remote <laughs> team, we, we don't necessarily celebrate like Johnny did, like have a have a get together um, because they're, they are all in the Philippines. So we kind of, we overlap in hours, but, but they work different hours than I do. Um, but they do get off from, uh, my developers off from the 20th of December through the 10th, I think of, of January. And the rest of the team is off from the 23rd until the 10th. So, cool. Yeah. 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 So I give them yeah, off. Same. Of course, we're, we're off. the 13th month. Yeah. So they get that nice little bonus at the end of the year and all that yep. stuff. So. And the we're on skeleton staff between about the twenty third and the tenth of January, I think. So we've just right. got the the support staff running, um, doing rosters there. Hey, Johnny's back, and I believe he's got some slides to share with us. It's a slide night with Uncle Johnny. All right, there we go. There we go. Oh, there we, go. We, had, we had an awesome uh, virtual team Christmas party. My team's always been all remote, so we've always had to kind of figure this out. So I think this is our second or third year we've done this. Um, and we basically, it was in place of our normal weekly team call. We kind of had a party. We told everyone, wear your Christmas attire, um, bring your own drink of choice, you know, whatever kind of your holiday drink is. And then we had some games and activities and prizes planned. So I told everyone how much I appreciated them. We laughed, we played games, we gave out prizes. Um, we had, a we had a thing where everyone had to bring a cookie to the party. And so then you had to put the cookie on your forehead and you had to see who could eat the cookie without using any hands first. Um, and so that was pretty fun. We gave out a gift card for that. We played uh, we played a Yuletide Pictionary where we used the, the whiteboard feature of Zoom. And then uh, 
the, the gal on our team who was organizing that game would message you privately what you had, like what Christmas thing you had to draw. And then you had a minute to kind of draw it out and you got a point for whoever guessed it first. Um, and so we gave out a prize for that and we did some other games. And then one of the cool things, so my team planned all this last year, I planned the whole thing. I was like, it'll be much better if the team plans it. So the team planned it this year and they came up with this idea to do a team holiday recipe book. And so uh, a couple weeks ago, they asked all the team members for their favorite holiday recipes. You know, it could be a main meal, an appetizer, dessert, whatever. And so we now have our first Johnny Flash team cookbook that uh, we have in a digital you know, format. And so we gave that to the whole team as like kind of a, a special thing. And so it's cool because we have a lot of Philippine team members, U.S. team members all over. So all kinds of different recipes in there, which I'm looking forward to trying and stuff. So it was just That's a lot awesome. of fun. It was really That's cool. great. That's and, great. Uh, what, what, yeah. what time of the day was this uh, end of year Christmas party for you guys? So our team uh, in the Philippines works generally like U.S. time. So they're working like evening nights for them. So we just huh. did it um, at 10 a.m. Eastern, which is 11 p.m. Philippine time. But our so, team's normally working those hours anyways. So the big question, Johnny, is at 10 o'clock in the morning for you, what mm-hmm. drink of choice did you take to the Christmas I had party? I had hot chocolate and I had uh, some tea as well. Ah, very good, very good, very good. Yeah. Ooh, you're, no you're going crazy. Cra- you were going uh, crazy, John. <laughs> uh, and, and also, how the hell do you eat a cookie on your forehead without using your hands? It was, it was so hilarious to watch, honestly. I was like trying to eat my cookie, but then I was trying to, it was just funny watching everybody trying to do it. And one guy was like really slow and gradual, like, and it was just like barely inching down on his face. And it was like, it was pretty awesome. So we gave out <laughs> gift card prizes for all the winners of all the different games and stuff. And it was, so you it was put really the cookie cool. on your forehead and you put your head back and then you've got to like use your facial muscles to get it down to your mouth, right? Yeah. yeah. Or if it falls off on the ground or the table or whatever, like you can't use your hand. So then you're kind of like however you can to try to eat it down. Wow. So I'm going, we're going camping the day after Christmas uh, for about a week with a bunch of families. So that's going to be a fun game. I'm going to get everyone munted on gin and tonic and then say, right, now it's time to eat a cookie yeah, off your yeah, forehead. Yeah, yeah, That's going yeah. to be hilarious. I wonder how many cookies the dogs are going to end up uh, with that night. Um, very funny. And um, cool. And so who, who organized it all? And also, uh, you, you do realize now that my entire team want to come and work at Johnny Flash. Thank you very much. <laughs> that, that's great. We, well um, so I had my account managers uh, organize it. They're kind of like my project managers. And so they, mm-hmm. they came up with all the ideas and everything. And wow. they led a lot of the different games and activities and stuff. We also did a gratitude ceremony. We told everyone mm-hmm. ahead of time, hey, we're going to have a moment during the team party where everyone's just going to share something that they're thankful for. And so uh, we did that as well. It was just, it was a great time. Everyone had fun. They laughed. It was about 90 minutes. We told them, hey, it's going to be about 90 minutes. And we played games. We gave out prizes. It was a lot of fun. It was cool. Nice one. Awesome. Uh, (laughs) Someone says, uh, James Murgatroyd says, I bet Flash is a fireball guy. Actually, I'm the fireball guy. (laughs) I'm the fireball whiskey guy. Remember remember New York, Pete? (laughs) Yes. Were you there? That, were you there at that yes, time of night? Dude, we were doing. There. Yes. Yeah, we this is great. It's it good yeah, fun. I, I remember it. Um, cool. So now, how? What? What? Yesterday on the velocity on the not the velocity call. Yesterday on the Mavericks call, we did a reflection on the year of the year. So what I want to do is I want to ask people in the chat, but then I want to ask you guys as well. The question I asked all the Mavericks yesterday is, what progress have you made in 2021 that mm. you can point to? Doesn't have to be doesn't matter how big or small. What I'm curious about is what progress have you made in 2021 that you can point to and say, hey, that's different from when we started at the start of 2021. There's the progress that we've made. And I know we've made progress and I can measure it by pointing to this number. So for example, Adam Silverman was talking about his team. Like he can point to new team members and go, well, we've hired extra team members. And, you know, he can also point to profit because he can look at his p l we had some people saying oh my processes are better and i'm like okay that's not an answer how do you know your processes are better mm-hmm. uh they said well because i'm not answering questions anymore my team are delivering stuff without answering without asking me questions i'm not involved in client projects so i'm curious for you guys in the chat uh jaden went from no clue to a clue actually jaden said he's on his way from going 
from a kid with a laptop to an agency owner, which I thought was excellent. Yeah. And I also think that kid with a laptop is a great name for an agency. Yeah, yeah that uh, is a good agency name. So, so what progress have you guys made that you can actually point to and say there's measurable progress that we made in 2021? And uh, Johnny, uh, what, uh, how, what for you can you look at as a reflection of 2021 and say, well, we made progress in this area and here's how I know we've made that progress? Yeah, I mean, we've hired three new team members in 2021. So we've got, uh, besides Jewel, my wife and I run the business together. Besides the two of us, we've got eight team members. Uh, so there's 10 of us now on Johnny Flash, which is crazy. Um, I, I used to run all the projects prior to this year where like we would get a new website built. I'd do all those weekly calls. I handed all that over to my account project manager. So they've been trained up after the kickoff call. They have all the weekly calls. They make the site map, the design brief to give all the tasks to the team. I mean, there's sites launching that like I didn't have anything to do with, which is great. And they're actually better than when I was doing all the things. So um, that's been a huge win. And I think our profit is about 50% higher than last year. And our profit was the best that we had had ever last year. And we're 50% up in profit uh, from 2020. So, wow. Awesome. Yeah. All this before your 40th birthday, hey, brother? Yeah, yeah. Got a couple, is, few days was left. Was yeah. it Christmas Eve, is it? Yeah, Christmas Eve, yeah. yeah Christmas That's Eve. awesome. That's so good. That's so good. Uncle Pete, crispy butter, how do you feel about 2021? I'm just sitting here trying to remember when I turned 40. I can't really remember <laughs> back that far. <laughs> um, so 2021, the number for me that I'm, I'm happiest about is a big zero. Uh, there's a big zero in my name next to my name in our ticketing system because I am no longer involved in care plan at all. Like I don't even know what goes on in the care plan anymore. And uh, that was a goal of mine as I was going away for about two weeks in September to Italy. Mm. And uh, mm. we got there and I haven't looked at the care plan since. So I have no yeah. idea what's going on in the care plan. And, and I think, you know, two weeks in Italy without, being on a call and without being on the phone and being uncontactable. No slack, that's a huge, no nothing. Yeah, no that's slack, huge, no nothing. Yeah. Right. The projects you, just remember, kept going and everything was good. I remember when Johnny said that he went, you, you, Johnny, you said you, you had a, a holiday and you went away for a couple of weeks and the first day you had the shakes because you weren't looking at the business and you were like, did you experience that? Because I'm about to go away for the first time after Christmas. I'm literally, I have no phone reception for a week, so I'm going to be off the grid and I'm, yeah. I, I have a tension headache just thinking about it, right? <laughs> like I'm like, oh, 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 I'm starting to panic, right? I'm th in fact, I'm thinking of every reason to try and cancel the camping trip so I can just stay home. Uh, so how did, like, did you, Pete, did you experience the, like the first couple of days where you were a little bit nervous and you were kind of like used to checking in on things and it was a new experience? No, I, it just, I, uh, you know, I, I really was able before I left to build up that trust in some key personnel and uh, just kind of left it at that and told them they had my Voxer. So then if they needed me, they could Vox me. And only, only once did I get Voxed during the, uh, during the vacation because a client, it turns out it was a coaching client. It wasn't really a client client. It was an agency Mavericks client was uh, repeatedly emailing me and not really saying why. So Michael on my team said, I guess I should reach out to Pete. Turns out, <laughs> turns out she lived in Italy and uh -huh. wanted me to purchase land near her. So that's what the emergency <laughs> was. That was the oh, only wow. time anybody in the, in the company that's reached funny. out to me was so that I could buy land in Italy, which I didn't do. Wow. That's amazing. Um, uh, Joseph Trebelsi here says, how is everyone's office so beautiful? Well, uh, it's not an accident. Uh, there's been a lot of intention really around, I mean, I don't know for you guys, but I try and make my office feel like a lounge room. I have some lounge chairs behind me, of course, and bookcases and stuff. And I want to basically, if I'm going to come to work, you know, for the best part of the, you know, five days a week, I want to feel like I'm kind of hanging. I don't want to feel like I'm in an office. I want to feel like I'm hanging out in a lounge room. I don't, this is not in my house, by the way. I have a separate office. I know you guys work from home, but I have a separate office. I need kind of that separation between home and work. So I have a separate office that I come to. And if I'm going to come in here, like I want it to feel like a lounge room. I've got my gu guitar behind me. I sit in the chair and noodle on the guitar quite a bit. And I kind of want it to be a relaxing environment. And so this is not, this is, I've intentionally designed this space for it to be, 
a cool space where I want to hang out and to try and be conducive to me being creative, right? Um, and so, um, uh, Yosef, that it's it's intentional, and I think, and I know these guys have actually put a lot of yeah. effort and thought into the way that their office is, and the, also the way their background looks, because we spend a lot of time on Zoom, right? And the amount of calls I have on Zoom with people, and I'm like, dude, like. I wouldn't buy a website off you because you look like you're in your mum's basement or yeah, a torture like, chamber. Like, like, like your, your like, refrigerator is behind you and, you know. Yeah, like raise yeah, the game. Yeah, like, yeah look, raise look, the game, exactly. Look professional, you know. It's well, funny, um, we all we actually, all three of us have guitars in our background, don't we? Yeah. <laughs> that, that just adds the, some cool points. But I was going to yeah, say, yeah. I, think we, I think we were all in a good position going into COVID because – We've all been living on Zoom pre-COVID, you know, in terms of having a lot of calls with different uh, Mavericks and other folks, right? And so I think, uh, you know, we were, I already, we already had the light setups and the different things kind of going into COVID. So it, now everyone's comfortable on Zoom. It just makes it that much easier, you know, yeah. when we're doing calls and stuff. And we also, we also all use nice cameras. So we're not using USB cameras here. We're using, we're all using the Sony A6400 mirrorless cameras and the Sigma 16 mil prime lens. Mm -hmm. And so that is what makes the backgrounds blurry and gives that really nice shallow depth of field. And that's been intentional as well. That hasn't been an accident. We set that up here in Melbourne and then we just duplicated it for all of our, uh, our coaches so that we will look professional and it's engaging. And I get on calls with people, you know, who, on sales calls with people and they're like, oh my God, I can't believe I'm looking at that background. Like I'm so familiar with that background and it looks amazing and it's a real talking point. And mm -hmm. so um, I think, you know, five years ago, if you were making video on the internet, you could just make a video and you could use the laptop and you could be looking up your nostrils and it was like, oh my God, he's making a video. Now everyone's making video, right? So you've got, I think you've got to, um, for me, it's about cutting through the noise and being a little more engaging and I still think there is room for like the iPhone handheld video, I think is really authentic. But this kind of look that we've all gone for here is designed to help attract attention and, and be more, you know, produce more engaging content rather than what everyone else is doing. So um, that's kind of been the theory behind that. Um, so what uh, a couple of things in the comment here, Martin Apostolov, I hope I'm saying your name right there, Martin, hired my third team member, expanded the services portfolio, got a second retainer client, moved from web dev to a more broad digital agency type of company. Well done. Awesome. Nice. Uh, and uh, James Murgatroyd, who I'm going to out here as anonymous Facebook user, because he said this yesterday uh, on the call, on the Mavericks call, I have processes and tools that I didn't have before. But what he said yesterday is, He's had a huge mindset shift from being a dev in the business to being an agency owner. He said on the call yesterday that he's basically, he's for the last 15 years, he's just had the same year, 15 years in yeah. a row, right? Yeah. Where it's been him doing everything. And now he's, you know, uh, fo focus number one in the new year is hiring a dev um, and getting, you know, he's just like, okay, now I just want to get off the tools and I want to be an agency owner. And it's really interesting that, you know, it can take 15 years for that decision to happen but then when it happens, and we've seen this with Adam Silverman too, when it happens, it happens, it's like once you see the light, there's no going back. It's like, oh, right, now I just want to hire more people because they can do more stuff and I can just focus on staying in my sweet spot. Cool. Um, so the the other thing that we talked about yesterday was what, what's the intention for 2022? What's the, what's the focus? What's the intention? And how do you know that you're – how do you know that you'll achieve it? In other words, it's all very good to say, you know, we had people on the call yesterday saying, well, the focus is sales and growth. I'm like, okay, cool. But how will you know when you've achieved sales and growth? So what's the intention? And then what's the success criteria and how are you going to measure whether or not you achieve that intention? Johnny, have you thought about the plan for 2022? Man, I'm always, I'm always thinking ahead and stuff, but, um, you know, we obviously we have our revenue goals in terms of that. Um, you know, I, I'm, I've been kind of focused on this pod structure of I've got my account managers and then they each have a developer and they each have a group of clients that they're servicing and projects that they're doing. Um, and our designers have kind of been to the side of that because I haven't put the designers like firmly in one of the pods, but uh, I'm basically kind of building out my own pods within the agency, which I think is pretty neat in the sense that the same clients are talking to the same account manager that have the same developer generally working on their site and so forth. And so we really get to know our clients well. And I think 
um, clients have really appreciated that. And I think that's one of the reasons we've gotten so many, not only referrals, but also clients coming back to us and wanting us to do their next website or whatever because of how well we've taken care of them. So, um, yeah, I mean, we've got we've got goals and things that we want to achieve, but I'm, I'm excited about 2022. I think it's bright. Love it. Um, Darren Craig says, don't work with dicks in the sales process. <laughs> <laughs> Just print that out on a big A3 poster and stick it up in the office, right? No dicks. This is a dick-free zone. Dick-free um, zone. Dick-free zone. And uh, that's my plan to be more picky. Love it, Darren. Uh, go from 40% conversion on 200K to a 60% on 350K. Woof. Nice. Love it. Con- what's conversion, James? What do you mean there? Uh, go from a 40% conversion on 200K to 60% on 350. Is that is that 40% Profit margin? margin? 40% conversion? Walk us through that, James. What's the uh, what's there? Alex uh, Alex Jenowicz has – I hope I'm saying your name right there, dude. Alex Jenowicz has uh, hired Dear Designer and GoWP, which is a killer combination, by the way. Dear Designer and GoWP dedicated developer uh, and was amazing and did my largest project ever. We'll use that setup moving forward for every single project. So – Similar to what Johnny's talking about, this is like an outsourced pod, right, where you've got Dear Designer and GoWP, and that's scalable. I mean, it's, your margin, old, long term, your margin is going to hurt because you're paying a premium, but, and, and, you know, rather than having people work for you in-house. However, it's a great place. It's a great way to start. It's very, pretty low risk because if it doesn't work out or things slow down, you can just kind of pause or cancel, or, you know. So it's fairly low risk and a really good way to, to – uh, to do that and but it is kind of that pod where you have a designer and a developer and then the missing piece then is really just getting someone to project manage it right it's it's yeah. a good way to supplement when your team is overloaded too if, if if you're if you're in a spot where you've got a lot of sales coming in and a lot of projects at one time you can supplement it with a with a pod like that that can be temporary and then when things go back to normal you're back to normal yeah, and, I, yeah. and I'll just throw in too, I like hiring my team members uh, overseas at like 25 hours a week to start. And what that does mm-hmm. is it gives me the room. And I think our team accelerator is a great example of this, right? You get the you get the right team member, they're overseas, the cost is maybe a little bit lower than if you were hiring someone local. And then because I've hired them at 25 hours a week, I can increase their hours, you know, when we get really busy. Uh, which has worked really well for us in terms yeah. of like having the bandwidth. <clears throat> There's also something about the the um, yes the the cost is uh, probably makes economic sense hiring someone, say for example in Vietnam or the Philippines or Thailand or India versus locally because frankly the cost of wages in Australia are just fucking ridiculous. Like to hire a to hire a good full time dev in Australia is going to cost you well over hundred grand, right? Yeah, because same, in, same where I am. Because yeah. software companies are just software companies are just chewing them up, like Atlassian and you know Canva and Campaign Monitor. Like I remember at one point, um, Campaign Monitor basically just went around and just hired every Ruby on Rails dev in the country, right? It was just like, you just couldn't get a Ruby on Rails dev. All these freelancers just went, no, I can't do any more work because I'm working for Campaign Monitor. So the large software companies are, are kind of gobbling up that talent. So that what happens is you, not only do you end up with ridiculous wages, but you end up with a shortage in the talent pool. And this is something I've been talking to Mavericks about recently is don't inhibit your growth by just restricting your talent pool to local talent opening up and getting your head around hiring someone in and other geographic territories yes it makes sense economically but also just makes sense from a pure numbers point of view like there are more there's more talent there available to work and there are i i don't know what the numbers would be but i would bet that the percentage of let's say 25 to 40 year old uh people in the Philippines studying code to become a developer would be way higher than the percentage of 25 to 40 year old Australians studying code to become a developer, right? Mm, mm. Because they know that if they skill up, chances are they'll get a job working for a remote company, which is going to be way better for them economically than Mm. working for a local company. So the supply and demand there's more talent in those talent pools and they're learning at a faster rate than local talent. So And they're real you know, hungry to learn and they work hard and I mean lots absolutely. of lots of things, right? Yeah, yeah, totally. Um, so it's uh, 
uh, the and one of the things that I've learned over the years is that I like to hire people full time as quickly as possible. Once I've tested them out a little bit, I like to hire people full time because I want their focus. Mm-hmm. I want their one hundred percent focus on what we're doing, and I'm happy to pay for that rather than someone saying, "Yeah, you'll, you'll work twenty hours a week," and then you end up sharing them with five clients. I mm-hmm. want someone just focused on what we're doing full time. Yeah. Um, Cool, cool. So uh, Martin hey, hey, has. I a- gotta, I gotta interrupt you for a second. I have to actually bounce into a call with a new Maverick. That oh, here we go. Oh, nice. At the same time, so well I wanted to wish everybody happy holidays, and uh, yeah, we'll you see too, you. Pete. We'll see you when we come back. Thanks, Uncle and, Pete. Uh, yeah, no worries, and we'll talk to you guys later. Be Thanks safe. for playing. Look see after you, that crispy butter voice while you're on holidays. Uh, he's doing an onboarding call with a new Maverick, which is excellent. Martin has a great plan for 2022, getting enough retainer clients to be able to join Mavericks Club. Yes, love it. Love it, love it, love it, love it. Um, now, uh, if, by the way, uh, Jesus, who is working with us now, no, not Siri. Siri's just said yes. I didn't say hey Siri. I said hey Sus. Hey Sus, who's working with us now, is based in California. Uh, he is uh, he's opened up some time on his calendar to take a one-on-one call with you guys to help you figure out what the plan is for 2022. So if you want to have a chat with someone on the team, a one-on-one call with someone on the team, quick 15, 20-minute call to figure out where you're at, where you want to go, work out what the plan is, see what resources we can get you plugged in to help you get there. Just leave a comment with the word Maverick. Uh, underneath this video and Jesus will pick up that conversation. He'll ping you in Messenger, book in a time, jump on, have a quick call. Uh, As I said, figure out where you are, what the plan is for 2022 and get you connected with the right resources. Uh, So stick the word Maverick in the comments and uh, Jesus will pick that up, uh, pick that up in in Messenger. Um, So the question for you guys is what is the plan for 2022 apart from Uh, Martin, who we know now, what is the plan for 2022? What is your intention for next year? What is the focus? And how how are you going to know when you've achieved it? Uh, Because I think it's all very well to have a plan, but if you don't know what the the success criteria is, then you don't know if, you know, when you actually get there, you don't know what the finish line looks like. Hey, Johnny, do you use a journal or like a a planning thing or is it just in your head? Um. For like the big goals, yeah, yeah, we we I have them right here on the board to the side of me in terms of the I actually have my flight plan <laughs> and then I have my uh, my kind of quarterly and yearly goals. Um, I you know I haven't actually shared this publicly, but um, should I should I should I share my um, twenty twenty one uh, goal that I had? Yeah, absolutely, you know dude. You know what I'm talking about, right? I'm gonna I'm gonna I've got the clap I've got the applause button right here, man. I'm ready to go. So my, my actually for it's, it's been like a multi-year goal now, I would say, but my goal was to get, you know, obviously grow the agency enough that we could get our house paid off by the time I turned 40. I turned 40 in nine days and uh, about three weeks ago, we pushed the payment on the last payment for our house. And so we are like 100% debt free house and everything. It's ridiculous. It's crazy. I'm still like in disbelief of it myself, actually, honestly. That's amazing. Um, we don't have any debt in the business. We don't have any car debt, loan debt, house debt, anything. Like literally, we're hundred percent debt free. So That's it amazing. is like, uh, yeah, we hit the goal like a month early, and we have just been uh, pinching ourselves, you know, to kind of uh, just, you know, still trying to like realize it. Yeah. So well done, dude. That's yeah, awesome, man. man. Congratulations. So, Congratulations. Wow. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, it's, you know, I, I know you and I are both big fans of Dave Ramsey and we've been following his stuff for a long time. And uh, we are loosely, 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 no promises mm-hmm. yet, but we are loosely planning on coming out to Nashville in June 2022 for a mm-hmm. live event. Uh, if the pandemic doesn't get in the way, which I think it's going to, but anyway, <laughs> we're, you know, starting to add more restrictions here. The UK has just added more restrictions. So who knows? But anyway, all goes well. We will be in Nashville 2022 for a live event. And I know that that's a huge opportunity for you to do the debt free. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to go on the program and, and, and do my debt free stream. I can't wait. I can't wait for that, man. That would just be incredible. That would be great. That's yeah. That's awesome. Um, 
And uh, I've never been to Nashville. And I would love to go visit. I would just love to go visit the Ramsey, uh, the building out there that they they just built in like a couple of years ago. They paid cash, yeah, and built an eighty million dollar purpose yep. built building. It's just ridiculous, isn't it? I know, it? man. I know. It's incredible. I and I get you get some free cookies when you go there. So I'm 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 already I'm ready to go. We're gonna put the cookies on the forehead and. and then try. <laughs> That's amazing, um, and I've never been to Nashville, and it's the music city. It's the it's the you know it's the home home of music. So I definitely want to go. So what is the plan for you guys? I love this plan from um, uh, oh come on, uh, Jacovia Cartwright. I love this. My plan is to get a Tesla Model X. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to need to go from nine k a month recurring to at least twenty five k a month recurring. You're in the right place, Jacovia. Um, love it. I drive a Tesla Model 3, which is my little runabout, which I absolutely love. And I've wanted an X for a long time. Mm-hmm. I've, I've since decided to not get an X just yet. And I'll walk you through the logic. One is uh, you can't get them in Australia. There are just no Model Xs available. The next mm-hmm. one coming will be next year, late next year in Australia. And it's the new model. And it's going to be about 180 grand, 180 grand in Australia, wow. Wow. right? Which is which is, you know, that's like, that is, uh, that is, I don't care what school you come from or, or, or how much money you earn, that is a significant chunk of change. The other thing is we've got two kids, right? Mm-hmm. And we go camping and we do, you know, road trips. And the, while I love fully electric vehicles, don't get me wrong, um, and a big advocate for that, the Tesla is not, if you can like throw a tent in the back and a whole bunch of camping gear, because of the shape of the Tesla, it, you just lose a bit of storage room uh, because of the rounded shape, right? So mm-hmm, here's mm-hmm. what I've decided on instead. I'm actually getting a Kia Sorento plug-in hybrid electric vehicle. And what that means is that you can drive it in full electric mode for about 70 kilometres. And mm-hmm. then after that, it switches into a hybrid, which is a hybrid of petrol and uh, electricity, which is not ideal. But in Australia... We just don't have – the market is just not big enough. We just don't have the same choice of electric vehicles. In fact, cars that size, the only electric vehicle that size in Australia is the Tesla Model X, and I've just explained why that's not going to be ideal yet. So once the kids have grown up a little bit, the plan is still definitely to get a, a an X once we're not carting around gear and also once they're more available in the country. So in the meantime, I'm making a bit of a compromise by getting the Kia Sorento, which I've put an order in on, and I'm probably still going to have to wait until March or April next year for that to arrive because, oh, wow. uh, you know, again, they're just not um, – they're just not – they're just not sending them to Australia because, mm-hmm. uh, you know, uh, LC300X. What is that? What is the LC300X, which uh, now we're talking about cars? Tell me what model that is. The, who makes it? What what make is it? Um, uh, what do you drive, Johnny? Uh, I've got a uh, 2016 Honda Accord that has like the Apple CarPlay and and all that stuff. I, cool. I really like it. Although yeah. I hardly go anywhere, so <laughs> usually I'm taking <laughs> usually I'm taking the family van, which that's on our list of 2022 to uh, to upgrade because we've got a kind of older minivan that we towed around our four kids. So. Yeah. Uh, and that's the other thing too, is like, you know what it's like when you've got young kids, right? They just destroy the car. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah. I'm even nervous about getting the new Kia Sorento because I'm like, it's just going to be destroyed in like two years. You know, there's just shit everywhere and there's food and they vomit and they wee on the seat and it's just chaos. They don't really. Um, anyway, so uh, apart from buying new cars, what's the plan for 2022 with you guys? What is the, uh, what's the intention for next year? And how do you know you're going to get there? And so what I, when I say how do you know you're going to get there, what I mean is like what's, how, what's the success criteria? How will you know? It's all very well to say, you know, I'm going to remove myself from the project management, but what does that actually look like? Mm-hmm. Projects go out the door, you're not involved. Uh, you know, how will you know when you've achieved it, I guess? What does the finish yeah. line look like? So I took a 16 day vacation without my laptop in this year, uh, earlier this summer, which was amazing as we were talking about a little bit earlier. And I would love to like get that up to a month, uh, of not, you know, ch- you know, not dealing with the business, not having my computer, not being on standby or whatever. And, uh, and just kind of stretch that out. So it's, that's definitely something I've got to, I think the key for me to be able to do that is to actually plan a month long, <laughs> you know, time away so that I'm not just kind of around the house tempted to try to, uh, jump into the business or get on the computer, you know? 
Um, totally. Yeah, it's um, I I can't stay home if I'm if I'm off work. I can't just like even on the weekends I struggle. Mm-hmm. I'm like I just got to get out of the get out of the city, go on road trips on the weekends because if I'm even around the house, yeah, it's then like it's I'm just tempting. I'm, yeah, yeah, I'm just thinking I'll just check something on Slack and. So I like to try and just get out and just completely change the landscape and change what you focus on. We went to Hillsville, which is about an hour and a quarter out of Melbourne last mm-hmm. weekend with the kids and, and their cousins. And Hillsville is this beautiful little sleepy hollow in the hills with these, you know, beautiful gum trees everywhere. And there's the Hillsville Sanctuary, which is an Australian native animal a zoo. Essentially, mm-hmm. it's a very small zoo just full of, you know, kangaroos and wombats and wallabies and dingoes and this amazing amphitheater where they have a bird show where they bring out these incredible birds that are so well trained they fly around they fly right over your head there's this wow. huge barking owl flying right towards you and goes straight over your head and goes to the keeper who's got some snacks for it um mm. really well trained birds a big wing uh, uh, uh um uh, what's the wedge wedge tail eagle this massive wedge tail eagle cockatoos parrots it was incredible and I, re- I just got home after three days and I was like, wow, I haven't pretty much haven't thought about work for three days, which is just a really good mindset shift and a good kind of reset. Because mm. uh, even if, you know, it's what it's like as a business owner, even if you're not working, mm-hmm. one of the challenges is to just like put your head into another Yeah, not be thinking or, about it, right? <laughs> about it. Exactly, yeah, yeah. which, is, which yeah. is tricky. Um, hey, while we're getting some feedback from people in the... Um, uh, while we're getting some feedback from people in the chat here, I think what we should do is we got a um, a video recently sent to us. I'm seeing Max up here. A friend of mine, Greg Corhan, who you know, Johnny, was mm-hmm. in Mavericks mm-hmm. uh, a couple of years ago. He's a filmmaker. Mm-hmm. He moved to Nashville uh, about a year ago. And I said to him, hey, now that you're in Nashville – you should go down and hang out with Adam Silverman at his farm in Williamsport, which is about an hour south of Nashville. Mm-hmm. And uh, you should take your cameras, man, and film a case study, film a, a video on on Adam because he's got he's done some amazing things down there. And so Greg did. He went down to Nashville. They hung out for a day on Adam's farm. He took the cameras and the crew and they shot a video. And I got this edit back a couple of days ago, I think like 48 hours ago. Oh, man, I can't wait to see this. I haven't I even seen next- it. I think Max has got it queued up. Yeah. So uh, I hope turn your speakers up. This starts out pretty loud. So be warned. It starts out loud. Uh, here is the brand new video that we just got on uh, Adam Silverman from Williamsport. His company is called Mewtown Digital. Max, hit the play button. <laughs> So back in the day, I was a professional drummer. I still do session work, and uh, I've toured all the way from my 20s into my mid-30s. At some point when I was drumming, I was traveling all the time. I loved music so much. I loved the drums so much. I never liked traveling at all. I just didn't like it. And after I thought about how much I had to give up to be away from my family and my kids were going to grow up, while I was seeing them on FaceTime, and that was the future that I had. So I started looking for what that next chapter might be, and I found web development and ultimately found the digital agency space. And the agency I had in mind was not a solopreneur. Like, I didn't want to just be me with some contractors. I really wanted to grow like a full-scale team, and so I needed something that was going to show me how to do that. Financially, when I joined Mavericks, it was, it was, it was a leap. My biggest struggle was, do I really believe in myself enough to make this investment and not just the fiscal investment, but the mental and time investment it takes to put into the business. And I really, I struggled with that. I kept thinking, I'm not good enough for this, or I'm not far enough ahead, or these people are going to laugh at me. You know, there was a lot of like fear built up in there. And I thought, if I'm not willing to make an investment in myself, how can I ask my clients to make an investment in what I'm doing? If I won't give to me, what's going to inspire my customers to give to me? Like, why should they do it if I won't even do it? And a year and a half later, it's like, I'm not, I would go back and tell that guy, you can, (laughs) you just need some help. You need some help. You need some coaches that believe in you, but you can. 
And as soon as you get in there and realize there's all these other people that believe in you, not just coaches, but other agency owners and knowing that they're rooting for you and cheering for you, there's just something in that, that, that takes that fear away. You just have to take the step. It is incredibly difficult to run the business when you're in the business. We're on a farm here, we're on an equestrian farm, and I do a lot of, of brush hogging, so I drive the tractor and I mow tall fields, and really that's like where most of my thinking happens. When you're able to zoom out and you have team members that are doing the work for you, um, and they're, doing the, they're working with the clients, and you're able to actually get out of it and look at it, it looks completely different. I'm not out of the business every day, all day, but I'm out of the business enough now to where I actually can see the business from a completely different perspective. Making the investment in Mavericks really helped me to build my team. And then ultimately I was able to then spend my energy doing the things that were actually gonna propel the business forward. My name is Adam Silverman. I'm with Mealtown Digital in Williamsport, Tennessee. Wow, that is amazing. I love the video. I love Adam. I mean, Adam's just so great. But uh, even just to see the growth over the last 18 months and stuff, it's just inspiring. It's uh, oh, it's just so good. So many things. Uh, it's it's it's. it's I, I mean, I'm speechless. I can, it's such a great story. It's so well put together. And, you know, it's exactly what Adam told me when he came out in San Diego, February 2020 is when he joined Mavericks. And it's exactly what he said is like, you know, I'm, I, I, I was a touring drummer and uh, I was, I was, you know, like I'd be, I would be backstage about to go on and I'd have my kids on FaceTime saying goodnight to them as they're going to bed. And then he'd be about to go on stage and, and play. And he's like, man, I got to, this is not a lifestyle that I want. And uh, when he came and he was, you know, it's so true. When he came out to San Diego, uh, Feb 2020, he was like a rabbit in the headlights, man. He was like, he was like overwhelmed and like freaking out. I'm like, I'm not, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. And I don't even know what I'm doing here, but I think I'm in the right place. And now he's just, his confidence and his journey has just been amazing. And I think Greg just did an incredible job capturing that on video and uh, yeah, can't wait to be sharing that that more with everyone. So you're going to see that video a lot on social because we're going to turn it into an ad campaign and, yeah, and run it. it. And um, it. Yeah. Well done, Greg. Well done, Adam. Love it. Yeah, so good. So good. Uh, awesome. So a couple of other comments here in the chat that I want to talk to, uh, that I want to talk about. Jacovia says, for me, uh, 2022 would be only doing a few consultations or fractional type roles and the business is running with me not having to be involved in every aspect of the day-to-day. Are you familiar with the fractional kind of fractional CMO role, Johnny, that he's talking about? Mm -mm. No. So fractional, we just hired a fractional CMO actually to help us here because the sort of, you know, I'm just trying to get out of every seat in the business and marketing uh, is kind of one of those things that is my sweet spot. But I just don't, I mean, I, you know, I, I mean, and I love it, but it just means that I can't do other things like, you know, think about who to hire next and uh, yeah, yeah. You know, think about larger um, strategic things. And so fractional CMO is someone who basically kind of works with you a fraction of the time, right? They, they're they not a full time. Uh, they're usually remote. They kind of, uh, our fractional CMO Tissu, we meet with him once a week. He looks at our numbers, he looks at our business and he goes, right, this week we're going to do this. And he just fixes like one thing a week. And uh, he's performance-based, which is amazing. Like his offer was too good to refuse. So he only gets paid on additional revenue that he helps create, which is great. So very low risk. And he does a little bit of like, he'll do some copy. He knows enough that he can kind of log in and fix a page in WordPress if he needs to. But our team do most of the implementation. He just comes up with the strategy and the and he acts like a true cmo it's like we have a weekly meeting he's like all right cool let's fix this this week and then our team go and do stuff and then we report back and make sure that you know we can track everything so that he gets paid on the performance so that's super interesting and i think it's a really good model because it's uh, more strategy and less of the you know kind of detail yeah, uh, yeah. less of the actual doing which is good i'm just trying to also find out who these people are who uh, anonymous Facebook users. Daniel Doherty, click the link and give StreamYard permission, my friend, so that we know who you are. 
So 2022 is building a team to hand off builds after the design phase. It takes two weeks off each quarter. Uh, take two weeks off each quarter, one week road trip to see clients and one week off. Interesting. Instead of waiting till the end of the year for a holiday, burnt out. Yes. So scheduling mm. those two weeks off every quarter. Love it, Dan. Uh, my friend Dale Beaumont does that every year. He looks at the calendar and he's got like, you look at his calendar, it's like there's two weeks in April where he's just not around. He's just mm-hmm. on holiday. He's completely disconnected. Love it. Uh, and I think he ends up taking like eight weeks off a year. When he works, he works his ass off. And when he's on holiday, he does not work at all. He's completely mm-hmm. disconnected. So um, mm. I think just having that intention on the calendar as well and planning it out rather than being – one thing that I'm trying to get better at is 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 looking ahead a little bit more and planning stuff in the calendar rather than just being a bit more reactive. Mm-hmm. And it's I think it's easier now that our kids are kind of getting to that age where, you know – we can plan like Oscar's cousins in first uh, eldest cousin is in primary school now. So we can kind of plan around the school holiday period. Uh, it's kind of tricky before they're in school because you can kind of take a holiday whenever you want, which means you don't generally end up doing it. Whereas now we're working on the school calendar. We can plan it around school holidays. Um, Andrew Downey says that was a great drumming session. Uh, fantastic. By the way, if you're listening to this and you're not in the group, come and check out the digital Mavericks Facebook group and watch that video from, Adam, it was, it's outstanding. It looks amazing. His farm is great. And, um, and you know, a, a, and his drumming is just awesome. Yeah, Taki starts the year plan with family breaks first. That's right, Brian. Yep, definitely. Um, cool, cool. All right. Hey, Anything Troy. Need? Yeah. Hey, Troy, I got a little um, thing I've been working on for, um, you know, the website worksheet from the old, you know, WP Elevation Blueprint. I've been yeah. kind of working on like a visual express version Mm. Um, we haven't launched it yet, but you, you want a little sneak peek? Absolutely. Cool. I'll show you. Um, okay. Oh, nice. So, so basically the idea is like, how could we get like some basic information without having to like fill out as much stuff or whatever? So mm. you can kind of choose whatever things you're interested in. And then it kind of customizes the journey for you uh, mm. based on that. You know, and we, we pay out a referral fee. So we want to know if someone referred them. Mm-hmm. Um, and then it'll kind of ask you questions tailored to, you know, our, we're, we're doing a lot of like either websites for businesses that are trying to generate leads, e-commerce or like mm-hmm. church and nonprofit. Right. So they can kind of mm-hmm. choose whichever one. And then based on what they choose, it'll tailor kind of the experience a little bit further. Mm-hmm. Um, we're just kind of getting a sense of like, OK, how big is this site? And then depending mm-hmm. on what type of website they said, it's going to ask them, well, first I'll ask them if they want copywriting done. Mm -hmm. Uh, but then it'll tailor the experience to even further in terms of like, okay, this is typically what we might have on a service based, uh, website Mm -hmm. that's trying to generate leads, you know, which of Mm -hmm. these things do you need? And Mm -hmm. so we're not like trying to generate an automatic, like, you know, price at the end of this, but just Mm -hmm. trying to get a quick amount of information, um, you know, so that we can then set up a call and kind of, uh, dive in, you know, triage this and go into it deep or whatever, but, um, love it. Yeah. And so it's just kind of a quick sort of visual thing that they can kind of fill out. And then um, at the end, obviously, they'll put in, you know, uh, their details and and then we'll kind of go from there. So mm, love it. How, what did you use to build it? Uh, just in Gravity Forms. Wow. Nice so one. You can use Fluent Forms or I mean, there's <laughs> lots of tools that you can use, right? I love but, the progress. I love the customized progress meter. That's super cool. Yeah. Um, and uh, what, what? So, what's the what's the hypothesis here? Like, why 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 are you building this? So, basically, right now, if they want, like, if they want to fill it out, we have kind of like the long, like, five page website worksheet with like lots of questions. And so, basically, mm. now what we're going to do when they say they want a quote, we're going to basically say, do you want the express version that takes less than five minutes, gives you know, kind of rough ballpark, whatever. Or do you want like the detailed, like longer takes, you know, 20 minutes or whatever to fill out. And we do have clients amazingly enough that will fill out the long website worksheet. And then we land a 20, $25,000 more project, you know, and they took like probably 30 minutes or an hour to provide like tons of detail. But then Mm -hmm. we also have other clients where they're like, Hey, we just, we want to get to the steps faster. We don't want to have to Mm -hmm. fill out a 30 minute form, you know? And so we're kind of just trying to accommodate that still get some you know to have a little hoop for them to jump through but not to be so much of a uh, hurdle that they have to go through in order to work with us right mm-hmm. yeah got it um james murgatroyd the lizard brain is in overdrive and says is that a conversational form in gravity forms 
Um, not sure what a not conversational sure. form is. It's and like honestly, a type form. It's like it, it kind of mimics the type. Yeah, form we, that's kind of what we were going for. Um, yeah, yeah. The team, did, the team did all the things with the design and the building of it and everything. So I, yeah. I just know they use gravity forms. I don't have a lot more detail than that. I love I, the fact that you don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't know. <laughs> that's the correct answer. I don't know. I'm an agency yeah. owner. I don't know what my. I don't yeah. know how my team did it, but I know that my team did it, which is awesome. They did a great job. We're just we're tweaking a few things. We're going to launch it here. Uh, next next in 2022 so awesome. in january that's great uh anonymous facebook user who who well check that out we've had 82 comments on this uh this uh, live stream Sweet. so far someone said for me uh 2022 it's processes defining what i do better and being pickier and getting rid of my 100 to-do lists i'm not mm -hmm. sure who that is but mm -hmm. uh awesome thank you for sharing that um and click the link to give StreamYard permission to know your name and your face. That was so that was Darren it. Craig with that one that you just Darren read. Craig, gotcha, gotcha. Um well, you know, Darren, team will help you do that, man. Team will help you get rid of your to-do list because you can delegate to the team. I was talking to someone, I've had two conversations this week with people who are like, Well, you know, I don't I'm not I don't really want to grow sales at the moment. I'm like, walk me through that. <laughs> tell me why you <laughs> tell me what's the thinking? And the what it came down to is a fear of taking on too much More work. More than they could, yeah, right? being overwhelmed. Than handle. And what that comes down to is not having enough team members or the team not performing the way that they should be. Mm -hmm. Yes, Darren, you did ghost me after my follow-ups. Uh, that's okay. We can reconnect, brother. Um, <laughs> and so my approach is this. Always be – like never stop advertising, never stop selling, never mm -hmm. stop recruiting. That's mm -hmm. my mantra, right? Because mm – -hmm. The only way, as you know, Johnny, the only way to get your business generating a profit without you doing all of the things is to hire good people and let them mm -hmm. do their thing. And the mm -hmm. only way to pay for that is to sell more stuff. Yep. And the only way to sell more stuff is to constantly do your positioning, your marketing, your promotion, That's, whatever. I'm pretty doing. much the sales guy now, honestly. Yeah. I, I, you know, I'm, I'm on the sales calls. I had two today. Normally, December slows down for us, you know, right before the holidays. Had mm -hmm. two new calls about two new projects today. Got two scheduled for tomorrow, and so I'm just you know I'm the sales guy and the uh, the coach. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Uh, so you know, foot on the pedal in terms of sales because that helps pay for people. Then hire good people, let them do their thing, mentor them, train them, give them the resources they need to be successful, and then just get out of the way. Yeah. Um, so uh, uh, yes, so intention for 2022 is never stop advertising never stop selling never stop recruiting like always be always be advertising selling and recruiting um uh, that's the that's the uh that's the way christopher stratman says sales the last week and this week have been off the charts good excellent all right yeah, cool there's cool a of, there's a lot of people that got to burn budgets for 2021 that are on a fiscal you know 2021 mm -hmm. calendar year thing and they want to spend some money i'm happy to take it <laughs> exactly that's right even if we can't start until february we're happy to You're take right. your deposit yep. now <laughs> we're happy to take it and reserve your spot yep love it all right good stuff hey we are at the 58 minute mark here of the agency hour so i'm gonna uh, bounce out of here johnny flash thank you so much for being a part of it and thank you so much for being such an integral part of what we do here at agency mavericks with all of our clients and for sharing your successes and what it is working in your agency really appreciate you brother and Thanks, looking forward sir. to a great 2022 and looking forward to coming out of the states again next year man and hanging out in real life can't wait can't wait yeah Awesome. All right, gang. Have a great uh, have a great holiday season, whatever you're doing, and we'll see you back here early 2022 on the Agency Hour. Uh, again, if you want to jump on a call with one of our team, you want some one-on-one -on -one time to help you work out the plan for next year and get you plugged into the, into the right resources, uh, just drop the word Maverick into the comments and Jesus will pick up the conversation and have a chat with you. All right, gang. Have a great uh, holiday season. We'll see you all next year. Bye for now. All right. See you guys.